Hello everybody, today I've got a brand new pair of Allen Edmonds strands. I'm gonna unbox them, uh, do a first shine, probably also a little bit of a burnishing patina on them and uh, rubber protective half soles. Okay, so let's go. Now there's two spots in here that I kind of botched it up a little bit and I almost screwed up the shoes. Um, I'm gonna leave those in, um, you know, just because I want you guys to see the entire journey and I'm trying to build this channel, trying to at least on integrity. Uh, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Look at that. And here they are, all finished up. Okay, now these just came in today and I have not opened them yet. I purposely waited uh, for this video to come out to open them. Um, and I've got quite a few other pairs of Allen Edmonds. So this is the Strand uh, 11 and a half triple E model 1635. Um, this is a full brogue. I'm sorry. No, this would be a three quarters brogue. Anyway, this is a cap toe Oxford. Sorry, not a, not a full brogue. Um, ooh, I'm excited. And here we go here. They smell wonderful. I wish you could smell that. The smell of leather. Oh, wow. Look at this. All right, I'm going to look at them in detail. Let's get out of here, though. There's one. And it looks like now there. I've heard about the shoe bag situation, so I guess this one bag fits two shoes. Oh, oh they smell awesome. So it's a... Got a little bit of like, a, I can't quite place the smell, but almost like a little bit like of, uh, not paint thinner, but like a solvent smell mixed with leather. It smells great. Mm. Yeah. I put this in these shoes. Okay. So what do I see? So this is the, obviously the left shoe. First thing I'm going to do is check the uppers. I'm looking for the stitching. The sawtooth is called pinking. I bought these at the, oh, by the way, today is uh, uh, April 30th. Well, I guess technically now it's like one in the morning. So I think it's technically May 1st, but so I got these at a, a sale. It's 2020 and the stitching is very nice. You can see there, good, looks really good. The broguing is all punched clean. The holes are not stretched. The stitching is very even from the edge of the shoe. Nice and uniform spacing. It's got a little bit of burnishing there. You see that darkening around there? It's nice. And I'm looking at the cap toe. Medallion looks well centered to me. This is the medallion. The stitching looks like it's a nice distance from the edge of the pinking there. It gets a little close there, but I'm totally fine. I'm gonna also check the stitching. I had this problem, uh, I'll link a video below with a pair of uh, McNeil's I bought. Um, the stitching, I'm looking at the stitching and the spacing from the edge of the sole. And the problem I had on one of my shoes is it went, it actually, the stitching ran off of the edge of the shoe. Um, now the inside of the shoe, this is really nicely done. Look at that, you can barely tell. This is where the welt starts and stops. They always do it on the inside of the, shoe here and that's the gap right there where the welt starts and stops it's almost invisible they did a really nice job with that All right they call this uh i've heard other people that work at allen and it's called this the victory heel gentleman's notch right there this is so that the corner does not catch your pant leg leather soles gorgeous look at that awesome logo allen edmonds port washington Bench welt. So bench welt is their term. This is a Goodyear welted shoe and it is 360 degree Goodyear welted. Okay. A lot of the higher end shoes are not 360 degree. Most of them are actually 270 degree and they won't have the welting around the heel. Um, I guess the advantage to not having welting around the heel is you get a narrower, slimmer heel that's closer to. Okay. But I won't go into all the details of that construction differences, but... Um, but anyway, stitching is nicely captured within the groove. So far, they look perfect. 
And I love that look at that look at the stacked leather construction. I think this is actually not pure leather. I think it's actually like a, a composite leather material, but it's still beautiful. And by the way, if you noticed, can you tell here the height is higher on the inside? Okay, that's supposed to give arch support. Oh, look at that. Try to get that in the light if I can. You see that in there? Logo is hard to get in the light. But anyway, that says, that does say strand. Uh, custom cork insole. It's a full leather insole, by the way. Nice. Ah, smells great. Let's look at the, some fuzz there. Stitching, broguing. Nice. Making sure my McAllisters, one of these couple of these holes weren't punched all the way through, which didn't even really bother me, but I think there's some fuzz stuck to there. Leather quality looks beautiful. A little bit of burnishing there looks nice. Ooh. Can you see that there? Doesn't bother me a bit. I'm looking at the stitching across here. Medallion. Well centered. Are they even? The toe caps even? What I have figured out is when you get something new, it's information overload, and you often don't see mistakes till, you know, later than something might bother you. So you will really want to check stuff closely when you get it. They look great. Stitching. Looks very nice all the way around. And again, they did a really good job with the seam on the weld. These look amazing to me. You can see a little bit of wrinkling there, right? The way the leather was stretched, it's on the back of the heel. I'm fine with that. I have no problem with that. That could be better. A little bit of coloring there. You see that? I'm fine with it. So this is $315 is what these were, okay? And it's a 365 de 360 degree Goodyear welted shoe made of full grain calfskin others with a full leather insole. And no, like for example, that's a good... Um, um, uh, example of what you often will get with Alan Edmonds. Um, Wisconsin shoe guy said this, and he said Alan Edmonds is more concerned with, this is his opinion, and I agree, they're more concerned with the construction and durability of the shoe versus pure cosmetics. If you want that to be perfect, to be quite frank with you, you have to step up to something like, I don't know, Carmina or Alden, and you're going to pay a couple hundred dollars more, really. You know, this is, like I said, 315 bucks. That's not a bad deal, okay? So... I'm extremely pleased. Beautiful. Love the shoe. Another thing, one of the reasons I was really looking um, at uh, getting a pair instead of getting these, uh, getting a pair of uh, Cobbler Union shoes, right? But number one, I can't try them on. I didn't try these on, but the 65 last. So what that means is last is the form on which the shoe is built. And Alan Edmonds' website tells you which shoes are built on which last. Well, Park Avenue, Shreveport, Fifth Avenue, and I own them all, are all on a 65 last. I know that the 11 and a half, Triple E, on the 65 last fits me perfectly. Okay, and I've never tried these shoes on, but I can almost guarantee you that they're going to fit perfectly because I know the 65 last and an 11 and a half Triple E fits me. The reason I didn't buy Cobbler Union shoes is they don't make wide widths, and they say their wider shoes would be the equivalent of an E. I email them. But they said, if I'm a triple E, I mean, they just don't make a shoe that fits me. Oh, here's something I'm noticing. A little bit here. You see, see a little bit of streak there. Right? But remember, especially the tan colors, this is full grain. You see the pores? You see, that is the outer layer of the skin of the animal. Uh, light colored tan shoes, these walnut colored shoes, is the hardest to get uh, good leather. Because if that's a dark, you can cover things up. But... In other words, it's uh, 
most beautiful leather color in my opinion, but it also shows off the most flaws. It's like a, in the car wall, the black car shows off the most bodywork flaws. Hmm. Awesome. Here they are, I tried them on real quick. And uh, I'm really pleased. By the way, here are my Park Avenues. And again, the Park Avenue is also built on the 65 last. And um, I bought these a few months back. I got these uh, for 160, I believe it was 160 bucks. But these were um, actually a, a return to the store. So eBay user DA Bondo one sells the Ellen Edmund shoes that get returned to the store. These I was able to buy for 160 bucks. This shoe almost never shows up on eBay. I mean, I've seen the ones that are even used, uh, very lightly used, n never seem to go like below 200 bucks. They don't come up very often in my size, 11 and a half triple E. I know you can get factory seconds, which are shoes that have a mistake for cheaper, but this light color um, with so much work, so much stitching on the uppers, I felt like if ever there's a shoe where, you know, you don't want a lot of mistakes in it, this was it, so... Um, I'm really happy, and I was glad to pay the 315 for these. But if you can see, I haven't even laced them up yet. And look at this. What I'm really pleased about is the eyelets are gonna. I'm not. I'm not getting a, a big V. You don't want a big wide V here, you know. And I've got, you know, a nice amount of room. Not too much, but I've got a nice amount of room. Um, ball. The widest part of my foot is right about here, and that fits well. My pinky toe is always the one that gets cut off. If I go to a 12, I just have too much room. See, even here, I have a bunch, a little bit of room. Um, and they're not laced up yet. But if I go to a 12, a size 12 shoe, um, then I just get too much room in the front of the shoe here. But my duck feet are the, the challenging part to fit. You know, so. Look at that. Awesome. Okay, everybody, I am out in my garage. I got my uh, mask, you know, with cartridges. I'm about painting cars. I uh, got my setup with the, uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, a little handy Liddy Binks airbrush uh, that I got from my father a uh, gazillion years ago. It's hooked up to a little electric air compressor here, right? And it's uh, just plugged into the wall. Uh, I've got the shoes masked off. Oops. I've got the shoes masked off, you know? So I've got the welt all masked off. I'm not gonna do much. I really debated on even doing this, to be honest with you, because the burnishing here along the eyelets is really nice. There's there is color in it, but I just want a little bit more. Now, here's the one thing I have figured out from doing this kind of stuff. A little bit too little darkening is better than a little bit too much. You go a little bit too far and it kind of looks odd. So I'm going to just do a little bit. Um, all right, so let's see how this goes. Look, I am your father. Now, it's not obvious at this point, but the first mistake I'm making is that in trying to save money and just, you know, save resources, I'm reusing dye that I've used before. And I didn't realize that the dye I'm using is pretty close to black. What I really wanted was a brown, medium brown dye. Uh, and as you can see here, it's going on pretty dark. So that's my first mistake, which uh, is going to lead to my second mistake shortly. Okay, so pretty much every time I've done burnishing on shoes, um, they always look a little bit too dark. It usually lightens up a bit uh, once you wipe them off, okay? By the way, I didn't say I wiped them off before I, uh, I went and you know, sprayed them with Acrylicline uh, wax and grease remover. I think alcohol will be fine. Uh, acetone will be much harsher than this. I did not want to remove any color, just grease and wax. So I think if you just use alcohol, you know, it's diluted 70-30 alcohol or 50-50, I think it'd be fine. Okay, so um, this is a 50-50 alcohol mix. I'm just going to spray a little bit. And here's mistake number two. Using the alcohol after putting the dye on is now removing the dye that I just put on and it's making it splotchy. So what I wind up having to do is uh, basically 
uh, take it all back off with acetone. I am going to use acetone. I know I went against what I just said, but I feel like I didn't get it clean enough. I need to redo it. I'm not gonna film at all, but I'm just gonna take them back out and respray them. Okay, so here, uh, after I resprayed them, I think that's what I'm looking for, and that should lighten up just a little bit. So I'm gonna do what I've done in the past which is just go straight to the moisturizing step. And that step will kind of, you know, take some of the things off of the surface. So for that, uh, I'm gonna start out with Tanner's Blend. I've used Tanner's Blend, uh, it's made by Ashland Leather Company. And the guys that own Ashland Leather, Leather Company, one of the, uh, I think he's a co-owner, I don't know if he's full owner or co-owner, but uh, Phil Callis um, is a friend of mine. And this is the same thing that they use at Horween Leather Company. Horween Leather Company is a premier tannery in the United States that produces leather. May not produce this leather, but point is this is what they actually use at a factory and I, and I trust that. I use this and I also use a sapphire, which I'll show you. This is primarily lanolin. Lanolin comes from sheep. I'm going to hit them with some sapphire. Uh, this is Renovateur. This is a mink oil based conditioner. And what these are both doing is putting uh, you know, conditioners back into the leather. Because who knows how long these you know, shoes were sitting on a shelf. You know what I mean? So sometimes I use my finger, but for this, since it's got dye on it, I'm going to use a claw. There's, it's going into the leather, but it's, see, I don't know if you can tell, it kind of sits on, it goes in and then if I do a heavy spot, it kind of sits on top. In other words, it's not really absorbing into the leather very fast. So what that seems to indicate to me is that this leather is pretty well hydrated. And sometimes you'll see when you condition shoes like this, it just seems to soak in and, you know, just absorb into the leather really fast. That's more of an indication to me that the leather is dry and needs continued nourishment to moisturize it. You should always have a mug like this with your name on it. It's in one of your kids or somebody picks up your mug and sips out of it. There's no big as your name on it. Yeah, it does. Okay, now that they're nice and unreturnable, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some rubber protective half soles on them. I've already worn them around the house. I've worn them for about three or four hours. They're oh, awesome, awesome. So the most comfortable shoes I've ever owned, um, even when they're not broken in. But I'm gonna go ahead and put, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Now, I used to use these, the Goodyear rubber protective half soles. They're fairly thick. Um, I'll post in the video the thickness, if I recall, it's two and a half millimeters. And it's hard to tell on the video, but they they just look pretty clunky. You know, they just don't look nice. So I've stopped using these, even though they're really durable. And um, I'll put in the description below the video uh, what the you know where I've got these. 
but I've gotten thin ones like this, which are just much prettier, and they still last long enough. But the problem is, sometimes they're just not big enough. It just really barely covers the shoe. You see, it's like, um, I mean, this I probably could use, but then I'd have to do it straight. So I, I, instead of that, I bought a big sheet of it. Right? You can see where I've already cut some out. So now this gives me ability to get better coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this stuff. I'm gonna trace it out and then uh, decide exactly how I wanna put it on there, okay? Okay, and this is what a lot of the pros use. Uh, I got it for, I think, 38 bucks a can off of eBay Master All-Purpose Cement Quick Drying uh, Pet Petronio. Oh, I'm gonna take these to the garage and I'm gonna sand these first. So, sanded it down, all right. Get a good surface for it to adhere to, the glue to adhere to. Just a light scuffing. That's good for a first coat. Okay, can you see right here above the cut line? Can you see how, I don't know if you can tell in the video there, it's like absorbed in. The deeper you cut into the leather, leather what I found is the more porous it gets. And those porous areas are where the glue seems to soak into the leather and you'll need to apply much more of it. Okay, I think they're ready. This is the right, uh, yeah, right shoe.
All right, kind of only get one shot to line this up. Yeah, that's the wrong one. All right, here goes nothing. I almost ran off. Oh, damn, that was close. It actually was too close. I actually did run off. Start all over. I'm gonna have to pull all that off with alcohol. So let's see if I can do the other one better. acetone clean that off re-sand that actually yeah that was ugly oh well it's the first time I've done that I never did brush them after, um, you know, putting on the moisturizer.
Next is the mirror shine. This is using sapphire mirror gloss. Sapphire mirror gloss is made for uh, doing a mirror shine on the toe caps and the hard uh, counter area of the heel as well. Basically any areas that don't really flex. And uh, it's a harder wax. It's a much harder wax. It builds up very quickly and uh, you know uh, helps you develop a great mirror shine. So you'll see the process here. And basically it involves in the beginning putting on a few thicker coats and um, letting it set up a little bit. Then I have chilled water over, that little, over there in that little dispenser. And basically you repeat the process. The water helps to cure and solidify and harden the wax. Then you just keep building up layers and layers and layers until you get to gloss you know, of, your, uh, of your liking. So let me try and give you some tips here when doing a mirror shine. The initial coats can be very, very thick and can be applied you know, kind of like one right after the other. And you can see here now, I'm basically switching to the other shoe and just gonna give those first couple coats that I just kind of globbed on top of each other, uh, just a few minutes to, to set up. So here's the first coat on the right shoe and I wanna be sure to get it down into the, um, you know, closer down to the welt there, covering the entire toe cap. And I'm really just going back to where the line of broguing is. I didn't really bother to mirror shine on top of the broguing. It doesn't really show up anyway. And uh, so again, first coat pretty, first few coats pretty thick. And even just that couple minutes in between the first and second shoe, that will be enough time just to be able to get it to set enough. When it doesn't set enough and you go to polish the layer that you've added on, it will feel greasy. It'll feel like you're pushing Vaseline around, even when you put water on top of it. Uh, cold water seems to help. Uh, uh, and actually Preston Soto, is an amazing, amazing channel, and he shows a much more detailed method here and uh, a much more in-depth method, I guess you could say. He's got a whole special video on it. I'll link it below. And he actually uses alcohol. I haven't uh, tried mixing alcohol with water, um, but, uh, you know, you'll kind of see the results here uh, coming shortly. So now switching to the other shoe, and you're going to see uh, a little more wax added on, and, you know, like I said, I'm just at this point trying to build up the layers as much as I can. I'm not concerned yet with really trying to polish them out yet, okay? So you're going to see, uh, when you don't have it right, you're going to see pores. You're going to see what looks like a layer of wax over the shoe with pinholes all over it. And that's when it's not quite covered the entire shoe. Now here's a chilled water. Let's take a drop and polish. Take another drop, and the drop is on my fourth finger. The drop is on my ring finger, you know, and um, you can keep a little bit of a droplet on there. And it's kind of mesmerizing. I don't know, I love doing this. The whole world just disappears when I do this. Shoulder should actually get tired. Well, I shouldn't say should. My shoulder gets tired from doing this after, you know. I think I spent about an hour something like that, maybe 30, yeah, probably 30 to 45 minutes, a good 45 minutes, I would say, now that I'm thinking back on it. about these shoes that I've never had, even on the 65 last, to see how the V is like about perfect. I mean, I could cinch it a little more, you know, if I wanted to, but this is, I think, a comfortable spot. I've never, most of the time, this V is much wider. And I just love that, it's awesome. It's about perfect. And here they are, all finished up. Mirror shine toe caps. Make the burnishing is perfect. That's what I wanted. Subtle. 
It's not a huge difference from the way they came, honestly. And you'll see, I did shine the heels as well. I don't know if you can tell. You can see that area there still on the heel. The soles turned out very nice. These things still smell great. Side by side here, if I can. Kinda. Yeah. I guess maybe not. You're not gonna stand up, but you get the idea. Okay, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you so much. I'll also probably show you here a few shots of these shoes paired with a few different outfits. So what you're seeing here is I'm wearing a pair of, uh, you know, kind of a uh, tan colored slacks. I'm not sure what you'd call this color. A little on the browner side of tan with a Brooks Brothers dress shirt, Oxford collar button down. And obviously anything in the tan or brown range, you know, it's going to go really nice. This is what I was wearing today while I was shooting these videos, while I was working and, uh, you know, taking a walk here as you'll see. I just love the sound that leather sole dress shoes make when you walk, don't you? a slightly more formal outfit. Now, as far as suits go, this is on more in the informal range. This is a Joseph A. Banks 1919 suit, which you'd call a cheap suit, but, you know, it looks nice for the price, you know, and um, it's a light gray. It's got some very, very light pinstriping on it. You really can't see. It's actually a light, light blue pinstriping, like a, almost a window pane pattern, and uh, paired with that same button-down Oxford collar dress shirt, and you can see here, you know, it's got a nice contrast. Lighter color suit, which is less formal, no tie. You know, you're still going to probably stand out in most, most environments in this day and age. Now, lastly here, uh, I've got a Brooks Brothers suit. And this suit is actually kind of like a, a, a purplish gray. Uh, it's like, it's not as charcoal as it really looks. It's got a hint of purple in it with the same uh, button-down Oxford collar dress shirt. And you can see here the contrast really sets it off a little more. I would be careful with this though. This uh, I would not wear these color shoes if this were more like an interview environment or something like that. You know, this is now asking for a little more attention with the contrast, but I think the color combination really does look very nice in my opinion. You could also definitely wear these with a nice pair of jeans. You know, like dark colored jeans. I think in the black would look nice, uh, or even dark blue. Okay, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you so much. All right, God bless. Have a great day.